I'm so tired of being in this toxic relationship. I'm I'm even tired of toxic people. Like, I just want to be happy. I'm sick of yelling and fighting and screaming. I'm done with it. <laughs> I'm so done with it. If over it was a person, it would be me. <sighs> Let's do this. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Yana Samaria and you already know what it is. Welcome back. If you are new, welcome to the team, y'all. Welcome to the family. If you don't spend this block and you spin it again, what's good with you? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can get each and every video every time I post. So y'all today, we're gonna talk about relationships because Relationships can have effect on you, effects on you in so many different ways. So many ways that sometimes you recognize and some ways that you don't recognize and they can lay dormant in your spirit and in your system and come out at the most oddest times. And you're like, where did I get this from? Where did I pick this up from? And when you really trace back your steps, you're like, oh, okay. In that narcissistic toxic relationships that I have no business being in, but I was in anyway. So we're gonna talk a lot about that. So let's go ahead and get right on started. So in no shape, form, or fashion am I Ayala Fix My Life, even though everybody says that when they say, hey, what's your name? When I say my name is Ayana, they're like, oh, Ayana Fix My Life. I'm like, cute joke. <laughs> I get where you were going, but no, okay? But I have been in my fair share of narcissistic, toxic, okay, overbearing relationships, okay? And in some relationships, I was the toxic person and then in some relationships I was the receiver of the toxic energy because at the end of the day what you put into the world comes back to you tenfold so if you want to be negative guess what you will receive negative if you want to be positive you will receive positive so in that time particular time in my life I was very negative I was very toxic so I attracted what i was and that is my first point in relationships in toxic relationships you have to be careful because you attract who you are inside so a lot of times when we're in these tech uh, toxic and detrimental relationships and we look into inside of ourselves we weren't happy before we got into this toxic relationship we actually stumbled into this toxic relationships because we were looking for a placeholder a void to be filled of some sort so we're looking for someone who can kind of take us in and nurture us because we're hurt you know we're alone we're scared so we allow that type of energy because you know a prey a, a person can sniff out their prey an animal can sniff out their prey they can sniff out if the animal is weak they can see and look oh they're limping let me creep up on them and see what's good same in relationships a person can look at you and say mm, she's not all the way there he not all the way there. And if you get the wrong type of person, but the right type of person for that situation, they'll take that she's not all the way there, he's not all the way there, and turn it into a, I can manipulate this person. I can put this person in a cycle that it will be hard for them to get out of. Because that's what a toxic relationship, a toxic relationship is. You're in this constant cycle that is hard for you to get out of. And you're like, every time I'm thinking I'm getting out, something else comes back around. So whenever you find yourself in a toxic situation, look inside and say, what is it about me that I'm attracting? No way, shape or form y'all am I saying, if you're getting abused mentally, physically, emotionally, that it's your fault. I am not saying that at all. But what I am saying is what in you was broken, what in you was hurting. And you gotta be honest, right? Sometimes we like to point the finger, you, 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 you. You're the reason, you're the reason, you're the reason. But sometimes you gotta look at yourself and say, wait a minute, I allowed that because I was hurt in this situation. I allowed that because I had daddy issues. I had detachment issues. I had attachment issues, you know what I'm saying? I allowed this energy into my space and now I gotta answer for the consequences. And sometimes that's a tough pill to swallow to take a time and, and be abused. And that doesn't mean physically, but be abused in whatever aspect and then have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, gosh, how did I, how did I allow that to happen? And no, Everything is not your fault. And yes, hurt people hurt people. So people are playing on your 
weaknesses but that's the thing they're weaknesses so you need to figure out what the weaknesses is so that you can turn that weakness into a strength it doesn't always have to stay a weakness it can turn into the very thing that will make you allow you to overcome it and that will be an even greater victory you see in the scene where rocky Balboa was on the top of the stairs and he was like jumping up and down and he like passed out yeah it can be just like that when you get to the top and you overcome these things you're gonna feel so powerful but in order for you to overcome it you have to address your part in allowing yourself to be hurt allowing yourself to be in this cycle it's okay no one's shaming you no one's bashing you if you open your mouth and say you know what i was broken before i got here i don't know something happened along the way where i got here I noticed I got here and I allowed myself to stay here, but that's okay. Because now that I know what the, the road was to get me here, maybe not specifically, but I know the road, what it was to get me here, now I'm gonna have to try everything I can to get myself out of it. So, that was point number one. Also, point number two, it's okay to be alone. It's okay to feel like you're alone. I think a lot of time our generation or this world makes it feel like if you're alone, it's because you're this or you're crazy, you're not cute enough, you're not this. And that's so false. There are seasons in your life where it is important to be alone. Let me repeat, there are seasons in your life, babes, where it's important to be alone. You cannot get the second version of yourself, the best version of yourself if you're always surrounded by other people. Do you wanna know why? If you are always surrounded by other people, their perspectives become your perspectives. Their reality becomes your reality. That means you're not set apart to have your own lane. Because you're always around people, your lane is constantly merging with other people's lane, which just means your interest is constantly all over the place. You know, your heart, your desires, they're all over the place because you are not secure in your own lane. And in order for you to be secure and on your own lane, it takes for you to have seasons with an S that you are by yourself, completely alone. But even when you're completely alone, you're never completely alone. Because of course you always have God. There he is. You know I'm going to bring him up. You always have God. And those seasons that you are alone, it's important for you and God to be in relationships because he's going to cultivate a lane just for you. And in him cultivating that lane, he's going to show you how to navigate that lane. He's not just going to cultivate it for you until you figure it out. He's going to show you how to navigate the lane that it works in the best interest for you. But you can't get that if you have everybody in your ear. So I want us to get out of this, the stigma that being in a relationship is everything. Because that's what I used to think. I need a man. Not saying that I would do anything to keep a man, but I needed a man. Let's put that out there. <clears throat> But I needed a man to make me feel whole. You know, I was like a woman that thought getting married was everything. Like that was the I that was solidifying that I am a woman. Let me put you in on a little secret on some game. You a woman with or without the ring. You a man with or without the ring. If your desire is to get married, you will get married. But that's not because that's what you have to do. That's because that's a desire. A desire isn't mandatory. A desire is optional. You can't, I desire this, I can have it, but I don't have to have it at the same time. You feel what I'm saying? It's a desire. So with that being said, it's okay for you to take time to say, you know what? I'm going to be alone because in you being alone, guess what? You're going to be faced with things that's, you're going to be faced with the healing process. You're going to be faced with self-care, self-love, and, and that's important. That so to love on yourself is way better than having a million people loving on you. You can have a million. You ever been in a situation where you're walking in the room and everybody like, oh, hey, oh, you look so good. You look so pretty. And you're just like, thank you. Thank you. But as soon as you step out of that room and you get back in your car or you go to your dorm or whatever the case may, may be, you feel alone. You feel sad. You still don't feel good. You just got a thousand and one comments on your under your um, Instagram picture. Or you just got a thousand and one people saying, hey, how you doing? You look so pretty. But you don't feel that way because you didn't put any self-love into yourself. A lack of self-love is almost always the number one cause of traumatic, toxic relationships. Because a lot of times you love them more than you love yourself. And that is dangerous. That is dangerous. I have this saying. 
And when I'm saying it, people look at me like, Anna, how can you say that? But it's true. When I have friends going through toxic relationships and cycles, I'm like, listen, do you know, friend, baby, there's 8 million, well over 8 million people on this planet. Which means there is over 1 million men in this world. Oh, some come on somebody. Mm -mm, come on somebody. And they all ain't ugly. And they all not taken. They're all not gay. There's some single, available, fine men out here that will treat you better. That you can come across. Men are like buses. And, and women too. This is for men and women. Are like buses. You miss one, another one's coming. I promise you. I promise you, as long as you are whole and securing yourself, there will never be an opportunity that you're going to miss. Every opportunity that's for you, mind you, that's for you, will be for you and you will receive it. So do not be afraid to be alone. Don't be afraid to say, hey, there's more out there because there is. Don't just limit your life to the city that you're in. You stay in Jacksonville, but all the men ain't in Jacksonville. All the women ain't in Jacksonville. There's plenty of other states and cities and towns out here that have good men or good women. You just got to put yourself in position to find them. And the only way you're going to put yourself in position to find them is if you do what? Level yourself up. Get yourself together. Getting you together automatically qualifies you for everything that your heart desires. Everything your heart. Do you know? Let me come here. Do you know that there is no limit on what you can have? No limit on the amount of love that you can receive? No limit on the amount of patience, care that you can receive from another human being? No limit on the amount of things you can possess? As long as there's always a catch. As long as you did the inner work to make sure that you are okay you are valid you are securing yourself at that point you're unstoppable okay unstoppable i just had to put you up on game because baby i didn't know that and when i found that out i said wait a minute wait a minute okay so that was point number two let's move on to point number three point number three hun outside of finding god you are the best thing that's happened to you i'm gonna say that again for the people in the back who was probably talking and missed it outside of god Finding God, you are the best thing that has happened to you. He is not the best thing that has happened to you. She is not the best thing that has happened to you. You are the best thing that has happened to you. And I think a lot of times we don't want to be selfish. We don't want to be self-centered or considered self-centered or uh, egotistic or selfish. So we, we try to, you know, be selfless. But let me tell you this. One of the greatest mistakes you can make is being so selfless to the point that you lose yourself. You're giving yourself to everybody. Who's giving what to you? What are you giving to you? Are you saving a piece of you for you? Or are you so busy giving yourself to everybody? You are the best thing you got. Outside of finding God, you are the best thing that you have. Do not allow someone to take that away from you. Toxic people, toxic relationships, they're easy to come by, okay? They're hard to get rid of, okay? But when you do get rid of them, it's this, this tool. Y'all remember I talked about the tool bags in the previous videos. If you didn't hear that video, go back and check it out. But remember the tools. When you get out of that thing, because you will get out of that thing there there's always a way out and a lot of times toxic relationships make you feel like there's no way out no one's gonna love me the way that this person loved me i'm never gonna get this i'm never gonna get that that is so not true i'm breaking that generational curse right now that is so not true if you're looking at your relationship and it's toxic and you can see that it's toxic then you better know that there's something out god don't want you to have that mess that is mess in god's eyes that's foolishness and God's eyes, he want, the Bible tells you that he wants you to be slow to anger. So if y'all always arguing, how is that the best thing that he has for you? Sometimes you got to give it to you straight. You got to punch that thing out. How is that the best thing he has for you? If he wants you to be slow to anger. A wise man is what he says. Is slow to anger. A wise man. Anything else is a fool. Mm. I ain't trying to call you a fool. But uh. Okay. That's not what he wants for you, which means he has something better for you. There's always a turning point. You just have to be willing to get on the ship to make the turning point. 
don't stay on shore because you're scared to get on the ship because the ship seems like the waters are rocky the waters if you ever been on the water ever been at the beach you'll understand that there's seasons or not even seasons there's time spans where the water is rough and the lifeguards say all right get on out the boat get on out the water whatever whatever but then there's also moments where the sea calms and sometimes you're on a plane for example i was on a plane on my way to baltimore or on my way back from baltimore and he was like we're about to hit turbulence we're about to hit turbulence and it got real rocky on that plane and y'all who i was I, my butt cheeks was clenched. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I was sitting there like, I was holding my breath. I was holding my breath. But there was a moment where I can let that breath out. And I can unclench my cheeks. Because the, the, the sky calmed. The turbulence stopped. And the plane was able to continue to fly. If I would allow the turbulence of the, of the plane to really freak me out, I probably would have jumped out. Not realistically. Let's just be logical. But for the analogy, I probably would have jumped out. Because I got scared, it was too much. But if I would've just stayed a little bit longer, I would've noticed it started to level out. It's starting to level out, it's starting to fizzle out. So there's always a turning point in a toxic relationship. You just gotta be willing to fight. And in you knowing that you're the best thing that's happened to you, it will give you that courage to fight. People in these toxic relationships, these toxic people, they want you to think less than of yourself they feed off of you thinking less than of yourself they feed off of the insecurities they feed they can smell it okay they can smell it but just like they can smell that they can smell when you become powerful they can smell when you you get tired you ever notice the toxic relationship when they know you getting tired because you too quiet you know what i'm saying you know y'all know how i go you too quiet you ain't trying to argue now they arguing you just singing your little you humming they're like uh oh i'm i'm back i'm messing up what they do I know somebody said it right. They go buy you flowers. They try to have sex with you. Let's just keep it real. They go, they go spend a whole bunch of money on you. Come home to a whole nice cooked meal. Baby ain't never cooked before. That's how, because they know, they know what they're doing. So a lot of times we're looking at these people like, oh, we need to save them. No, you need to save you from them. They know what they're doing. They're comfortable and content in their lifestyle. And even if they aren't, it's not for you to teach them how to be the opposite of toxic it's not your job that is god's job stop trying to take his duty stick in your lane so if you stick in your lane you will understand that i need to get away from you it's not me that's a problem it's you and they want you to think that it's you it ain't you you have a right to be upset it's about the delivery you have ways that you can tweak and perfect it to make yourself a better woman or a better man but the root of the issue is not you the root of the message that you're trying to convey is not wrong. It's in your delivery that could be tweaked, but that doesn't make you wrong. That doesn't make you insecure. That doesn't make you crazy. That doesn't make you tripping all the time. That doesn't make you that person. They know nothing is wrong with what you're, what you're saying, but they're trying to use everything against you because they're toxic. And it's a cycle and some of them enjoy it. Get away. Take those points, y'all. Life is so much bigger than being involved in a cycle that's no longer serving you. Being involved in a cycle that doesn't do anything. But if it, if it gives you headaches, if it makes you cry, if it makes you throw things against the wall, cuss, scream, hit. If it takes you out of your character, it's not for you. You're forcing yourself into a mold that you were never designed to fit in. Let's just keep it real. If it's helping you grow, if it's making you smile, if it's making your heart flutter, if it's making your creativity grow, if it's making you grow as a person, you're expanding, you're learning, and everything is in a positive aspect, so knowing that in some relationships you will have problems, but that ain't the end all be all. You know, that is not the whole consumption of our relationship. Majority of the time I'm learning and growing, but there will be our sparks. That is a relationship that you're meant to fit in, in all aspects. So I hope these few pointers helped you put some things into perspective. I'm not telling you to pack your bags tonight because some of y'all gonna need a game plan. But what I am telling you is to at least get the game plan going. At least identify the fact that you need a game plan. Because at the end of the day, as long as you allow yourself to stay in the cycle, you will stay there. I'm not gonna sit here and sugarcoat it with y'all. Nobody can save you but you. You working with God is the only thing that's gonna get you out of that. 
You have to save yourself. Now, if you're in a physically abusive relationship and you're scared for your life, you, baby, are in a different um, sector. And we're going to have to deal with your situation a little bit more delic delicately. But if you are just in a toxic relationship where y'all just arguing and y'all can't stand each other every other day, you have to save you. Which means you have to love you more than you love them. And that's okay. That's okay. Because guess what? I guarantee they love themselves more than they love you. How's that fair? How's that fair for them to be smiling and you crying? It's not. So I hope this put things to perspective. Got your mind turning. Got your mind yarning. For better. Because I promise you, you deserve so much better. So It's going to be a fine man that walk past. Walk right up to you and say, I've been looking for you. And that's going to be the mode you're supposed to be in. But you can't get to that until you're willing to let this go. But on a lighter note, I love y'all. I root for y'all. Even if you are in the midst of a toxic relationship, it's all right. Everything gets better as long as you keep fighting. It's your girl, Yana Samaria. Y'all already know what it is. I'm out. <laughs>